One of the biggest challenges people face with home networks is keeping out unwanted or inappropriate traffic. This is especially true for parents in their efforts to keep their children and families safe online. In this video, I'm going to show you how the GCC 6010's built-in web filtering options can help you keep your network free of this unwanted content and provide you with some peace of mind. Let's get started. I want to welcome you to part 7 of the Home Network Guide for Newbies. This is, in fact, the final episode, so if you've been following along throughout the series, I want to thank you and congratulations, you are actually on your way to completing your secure home network setup. The topic for today for the final episode is web filtering. So let's take a look. We're working in the firewall module. We're on the overview page and over here on the right side of the page, you can just see the overview of the security log for web filtering. And then down below, you can see the log for the top filtered applications. Now, we're gonna spend most of our time today working in the web filtering area. However, I will touch on the application filtering. I just want to share my thoughts and my experiences with you because I did not have a lot of luck with the application filtering, but we'll talk about that later. Let's come over to the left menu and let's click on content control. We'll expand that and we're going to come down and we're going to click on web filtering. And the first thing we see is a blue notice and it says to filter HTTPS, please enable SSL proxy. Well, Again, if you've been following along in the series, we did that in part six. And if you happen to miss that, I'll put a link to that video up above here. We enabled SSL proxy. We created our certificate. We downloaded it. We got it installed on our computer. So from that aspect of things, we covered all those bases and we are good to go. So back to web filtering. Let's go ahead and enable web filtering just by toggling on the button and hitting save. Looking across the top, you have different categories for filtering. You can filter by URL, specific URLs, or by URL category, as you see here, or by keywords. So let's get started with the basic specific URL filtering. Let's click on that tab. Let's click on the add button. And for argument's sake, I'm just going to go ahead and filter out my own website. And no comments, my website needs a major overhaul, I know, but anyway. Let's give it a name. I'm gonna call it Block Quick Tech. For status, we wanna make sure the status is enabled. Under action, you can allow or block. Well, we wanna block it. And then for URL, you have two choices. You have a simple match or a wildcard match. Now, what is the difference? Simple matches, you put in it, you put the name in and it just matches it as it appears. With the wild card, you technically should be able to use an asterisk and then some other syntax, but I have not been able to get that to work. I've tried various syntax. I read the documentation multiple times and for whatever reason, it just doesn't work for me. And I'm not sure if it's me or if it's just a bug in the software that would be addressed in hopefully a future firmware release. But for now, we're gonna stick with simple match and I'm gonna type in quicktechsolutions.com. Let's go ahead and hit save. Let's open up a new tab and let's type in my website. And you can see we have the page return from the GCC 6010 that says the web page you visit is risky. And then here in black, it says the page you've requested has been blocked because the URL is banned and then it gives you the details here. Okay, so, so far, so good. Let's go back to the GCC 6010 and technically if I turn off the status and I turn off the rule, I should be able to go back, hit refresh and my page should load. And there you go. Okay, that's working. Now, you can add as many URL filters as you wish just by hitting the add button here and completing the fields just like we did with the blocking quick tech rule. But for now, let's move on to URL category category filtering. You could see here Grandstream gives us tons of categories ranging from adult to bad websites to blocking finance, gaming, shopping, social media, what have you. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at one of the categories. So under the adult category, you can choose to block 
all the subcategories you see here just by clicking the drop down menu and hitting all block or you can pick and choose the subcategories you wish to block just by clicking the appropriate drop down menu. But for the purpose of this demonstration, let's go ahead and block the entire adult category. And then let's scroll down. I did see shopping in here. Let's block the entire shopping category and maybe we'll try to get out to amazon.com and see if that's working. So let's come now to a new incognito window and let's try to go first to one of those inappropriate adult categories. So, and you can see the page you visit is risky. It's been blocked by the GCC 6010. The page you have requested has been blocked because the URL is banned and then it gives you the details. So that's working. Now, we also block the shopping category in its entirety. So let's try to go to amazon.com. And you can see that Amazon's been blocked as well. It says the URL has been banned and then it gives you the details right in the center here. Okay, so let's close that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow the shopping category. So let's come back to the drop down menu and say allow all. And let's bring up the other tab and let's go to amazon.com now. And it should load the page. And there you go. You can see Amazon is loading. So, so far everything is working as expected. Back to the GCC 6010. Let's go to the next subcategory and let's come over here now and add a keyword filter. So we're going to call this, let's call it block quick tech, not the URL, just the keyword quick tech. Status is on, action is blocked. As far as the options, we only have the wildcard option and I'm simply just gonna type in quick tech and hit save. And now if I come up to search on quick tech, it tells me that it's blocked and it's blocked because it contains a banned word and then you can see the details here. Let's go back, let's turn that off and let's come back up here and let's search again for Quick Tech and see what we get. Okay, so here we have Quickie Tech, not sure what that is, but that's not me. And then here's a Quick Tech. Now this is in Hempstead, North Carolina, and I've driven past this. This is an actual oil change place, and I think that's hysterical. And then here's another quick tech that's not me, it's courses. So in any event, you could see that the keyword filtering is working as well. Okay, so let's touch briefly on application filtering. I'm not going to demo this. I will give you an overview of the interface, but I more so just want to sh share with you my testing results. So let's switch over to the computer now. We are still under the content control area, but this time under application filtering and we're in the basic settings tab. Just like with web content filtering, you have to enable application filtering. But notice there's another option here called AI recognition. What is AI recognition? Well, the claim is that if you enable AI recognition, it's going to improve the accuracy of the filtering. However, there is one caveat, so to speak, and that is if you enable this feature, it's going to use up more CPU power and more memory. So basically putting more of a demand on your device. Definitely something to take into consideration. Let's take a look now at the app filtering rules tab. Under this tab, you can see all of the categories of apps that the GCC 6010 will filter. You notice if you hover over the text, you can click on the category next to the text in parentheses. There's a number and that's the number of apps within that category. So for example, if I click on the social category, it displays all of the apps that are going to be blocked and again there are 108 of them it has all the common ones like facebook and instagram myspace who uses myspace anymore 
Does it even exist? But I'm going to highlight here TikTok, and I highlight this for a reason. Let's go up to, we'll talk about that. Let's go up to the overview tab. And in the area here on the overview page, under the top filtered applications, you could see I tested with five apps. I tested with Facebook, TikTok, Peacock TV, X, and Instagram. Now, you could see it says Facebook was blocked five times. What I'm talking about here is testing on an iPhone running iOS 17.6.1. And for the most part, Facebook was blocked. The first time I attempted after I enabled the category rule, the first time I loaded the Facebook app on my phone, it didn't, but then it did, right? It kicked in. So I said, okay, it took a few seconds to kick in. As far as TikTok was concerned, it says here that TikTok was blocked a total of four times. Well, TikTok was not blocked at all. Regardless of what the log says, TikTok was not blocked. The content played no matter where I was in the app. Let's look at Peacock TV. It says Peacock TV, the attempts and the count was four and it was blocked. Although there was a caveat to that too. I would say most of it was blocked. For whatever reason, a couple of shows seemed to squeak through, and I'm not sure why, but then when I went to click on those icons, the show wouldn't play. So in essence, it, it was doing the job, but for the most part on, on Peacock TV, it was blocking out the thumbnails and everything, except for a few. Looking at X and Instagram, I could honestly say that both of those applications were blocked 100% no issues. Now, here's something that I haven't figured out yet. When I turned off the category filtering, so in other words, allowing all of the content to pass, my phone still wouldn't display the content for any of the apps that were blocked. So I decided, well, let's go ahead and restart the phone. And after I restarted the phone, Facebook started to work as expected. Unfortunately, Peacock X and Instagram did not. So at first I thought after restarting the phone and seeing Facebook working again, ah, it was just my phone. But when the other apps still weren't loading the content, I was like, hmm, what's going on here? All right, so now that the series is coming to a close, I'd just like to step back in time, back to the first video where I shared with you and set forth the goals of the series. We're gonna basically have three networks, our main default network, our IoT network for our little IoT smart devices, and a guest network. We're gonna cover things like how to get the GCC 6010 set up, add the VLANs, how to create Wi-Fi networks, how to adopt the switch and the access point, we're going to create global port profiles for the switch. We're going to create firewall rules to block the IoT and the guests from accessing the main network. We're going to talk about bandwidth limiting in this series. We're even going to touch on SSL inspection. And then finally, we're going to talk about content filtering for families. And once we have all that covered in the course of probably six or seven videos, you should have a nice, solid, secure home network in place. So I believe we met all of the goals that we had set forth back in the beginning of the series. Please let me know down in the comments below. Leave me your feedback. I would love to hear from you. What did you think about the overall series? What would you still like to see even though the series has come to an end? If you'd like to see more content like this, please click the video on the screen. And thank you so much for watching.